I was watching one of your old interviews from from 2022, and I feel like it's Mystic Wonder Boy predicts these things because you said uh, that you wanted to fight Kevin Holland, right? And then you said that you wanted to fight Michelle Pereira. So the Kevin Holland fight is is done and dusted. You've kind of checked that box, and it looks like all roads are now leading to UFC 289 in Vancouver on June 10th against Michelle Pereira. What is it about Michelle Pereira that got your juices flowing? And also, more importantly, you're ranked number seven. Michelle Pereira is ranked behind you, right? And a lot of guys in your position wouldn't take opponents that are either not ranked or ranked behind you. They're kind of usually looking forward. So what was it about this fight that you know, made sense to you? Well, this isn't the first time that I've actually fought guys, you know, ranked significantly behind me, like, you know, pretty far back. But, you know, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for those guys at the time, the Jake Ellenbergers, the, the, the Johnny Hendricks, the Roy McDonald's, who gave me that opportunity, right, to, to, to work their way up. There's a lot of guys that hold that just hold on to their one spot so hard and they won't fight anybody behind them. They only want to fight guys ranked above them. But you 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 got to give those guys an opportunity as well. Mm. And at the same time, if you do defeat those guys, then you deserve to be there. Right. You're like you, that's that's your spot. And then but in my mind. Going back and letting these guys work their way up. Right test themselves up against you also test me and let's, let's me know what I need to work on or, or, um, you know, it pushes me mentally, physically, emotionally. Uh, cause any, if you fight in the UFC, you're, you're freaking good. doesn't matter where you're ranked. Anybody has the opportunity to finish you. And that's, that's kind of how I see it, you know? And, but, but I think what's more important is giving these guys an opportunity to, to, to test themselves up against a top ranked guy. And if they beat me, then they deserve to be there, you know, take it. But there's a lot of guys ranked above me who are holding on so tight to their spot. It doesn't look good in, in, in the fans eyes, and especially in the UFC's eyes. Um, you should be taking on those, those up and comers. Now, if, there, if it's a guy that you've, I've never heard of, you know, maybe, uh, you know, there have been times where I've turned guys down. I was ranked number one. And they wanted me to fight a guy named uh, Darren Till. I'm like, I don't even know who Darren Till is. At the time, I didn't. He wasn't even ranked, I don't think. But um, I gave him the opportunity, you know. Uh, I, I said no, obviously, a few times. And they're like, well, you know, we're gonna get, we're, we're, we'll uh, renegotiate your contracts. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no. But Michelle, man, if you've ever seen this guy fight, that's another fight of the year right there. I, He's a wild man. Yeah. Man. He's cutting flips. He's running across the cage. He's got karate background as well. Uh, he's a big welterweight, but he's exciting to watch. And I think that just makes sense. Like who would not want to watch that fight, right? Who right. wouldn't want to watch that fight? Those are the fights that intrigue me the most. Those are the fights that get me excited, right? Not the guys who I who are going to lay there on you and be the most boring fight ever. Like that's, nobody wants to see that. And I don't think that's a good use for my talent as well for the UFC. You know, they want to see the best fights and I can give them that with guys like Kevin Holland. I can give those exciting fights where guys are standing up in their seats, you know, applauding at the end of the fight with the Michelle Pajares, the, the Vicente Luque's, the Jeff Neal's. Now, those aren't the guys that I, I would love to fight. I wish everybody was like that, but, you know, I'm not going to turn them down if, if they give me a, uh, you know, a uh, Gilbert Burns or whatever, but the, they just excite me, man. I know that, that we're going to put on a show. We're going to put on a show. And also, it's not the first time you'll be fighting in Canada. You fought in Ottawa and Toronto. Do you enjoy fighting north of the border? Oh, I love it, man. That's a, for the longest. That was my home away from home. Spent a lot of time in Canada. You know, a lot of time, a lot of time in Toronto and Montreal. Um, it, it was kind of my home away from home. I got a lot of fans in Canada. Um, so I, to be able to go back and I was wondering when the next time I would go back and fight in Canada will be again, but Vancouver, beautiful place. I've beautiful. been to Vancouver as a, as a, as a, uh, uh, a guest fighter. Um, actually, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I was in, I think it was Vancouver with me and Kamara Usman had like a little dance competition outside. I don't know if you saw that. That was in Vancouver, beautiful place. It, and I got to train the cast of the green arrow 
there as well. That's where they filmed the green arrow. So, um, Really cool. I'm excited to go back and, and be able to perform in front of the Canadian fans. Thanks for watching this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. Hey, do me a favor, hit the like button, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Share this with your friends. And if you really enjoyed it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I have a lot more amazing content planned. So jump along for the ride.